Hey everybody, it's Brooke from Mrs. Coghill Farm. And I wanted to tell you guys a story about something that a lot of you've asked about. And that is, how did Jason and I meet? I felt like if you don't want to hear this story, we can have some very entertaining background going on. Or I may not be telling the story at all. <laughs> well, I ended up having to stand up because the boys were wanting to sit in my lap and they were knocking the camera over. So you can still see the goats and Jesse right here along with me and I'm going to tell you guys how Jason and I met. Uh, first of all, we're going back to 1993. This was Jason's senior year in high school and in the month of May, so right after his graduation. Well, I don't know if it's like this still, but back then at the end of the school year, most of the time you took a trip and in his case, it was a, cru a cruise. So he had been dating a girl for several years that um, did not want him to go on his senior cruise for whatever reason. And so he didn't sign up to go. Well, they ended up breaking up right before the senior cruise happened. And he wished that he had signed up, but it was too late. So he had a friend that asked him if he wanted to go to the beach for the week the same week of the senior cruise. And of course he did because he was just getting over a bad breakup and you know, he wanted to have some fun regardless. And so he, he went to the beach, Gulf Shores, Alabama with a friend of his. So here I am, 17 years old, from a different school in the same town, but we didn't know each other. There were two main schools in the town at the time, and you either attended one or the other. Not large schools, but two main schools. He was a grade ahead of me, and we did not know each other. We had seen each other around, but never had any conversation, never been introduced to each other. And I just so happened to be friends with a girl that was going to the beach that same week for her birthday and her parents had a condominium down in Gulf Shores, Alabama. So she asked me if I wanted to go. So she, myself, along with another friend, loaded up and headed down to Gulf Shores. Now her parents were there as well. So we were able to drive her car and follow her parents and meet, meet together in Gulf Shores. So the first thing we did when we got there was stopped in a little souvenir shop. Well, we're standing outside and we see a car go by that my friend recognizes and she flags them down. Well, it just so happens Jason's in this car. He's in the car with the friend of my friend. And so we didn't have any idea that they were gonna be in Gulf Shores and I didn't know them anyway. So. She struck up a conversation with them and asked if they wanted to meet up a little bit later. We went and we hung out with them on the beach for a little while and got to know each other, the ones of us that did not know each other, and, um, and decided that, you know, we'd hang out throughout the week. So we did just that. Well, unbeknownst to me, Jason decided he liked me a little. And I had a boyfriend at the time back in our hometown. Nothing serious, just a, just a, a little fling. And so he expressed interest in me. And next thing I know is we're, we're kind of hitting it off. And I, I'm not knowing what to do because the guy that I was, I was seeing, 17 years old, hadn't seen him. I hadn't been seeing him but a few weeks. The guy that I was seeing was back at home and I didn't know what was going on with him. So I decided I kind of like this guy, this, this guy I just met. Well, 
as time went on and the beach trip ended, we went back to our hometown of Selma, Alabama as boyfriend and girlfriend. I broke the news to the, the boyfriend that I had that um, we would no longer be seeing each other and that was that. So Jason having just graduated, this was his first summer out of school, he had a job and he was working as a parts delivery person at a local parts automotive parts store. And so uh, I got to see him throughout the summer because his job allowed him to, to drive around throughout the day so we could eat lunch and, and meet each other at various places. And we, we grew rather fond of each other, so much so that, you know, when school started back for me, um, he was in junior college, but I had to get up and, and go to regular school every day. So I'm a senior in high school, not knowing what I want to do with my life. Um, and my parents, of course, wanted me to go to go off to college, but it really wasn't something I was interested in. I didn't want to leave home. I was an only child and it just, it just didn't seem like the time was right for me to leave home. And so I went through my senior year with Jason as my prom date, my homecoming date. I played softball and he would, he would travel to the out of town games. Um, I would have from parents permission from my parents to ride back from that game with him in his car. Lots and lots of fun events with Jason throughout my senior year in high school. Um, so it came, it came time for me to go on my senior cruise and I didn't want to go. But my parents really wanted me to go. They thought if I did not attend my senior cruise, then I would always regret it. I didn't want to go. I did not want to go, but I did what my parents wanted me to do, and I went on the senior trip. Loretta is talking. I went on that senior trip, and it was my first week away from my new love, so to speak. Um, I did not enjoy the trip, and the reason, the main reason I did not enjoy the trip is because I was seasick the entire time. It was not a large boat whatsoever. Um, I mean, yes, I was with my classmates, I was with my friends, but I just did not have an enjoyable time. So, I was glad to be back home, glad to be back with Jason, and on to the next chapter of my life, which was junior college. So now, we're both in school together. We're both at the same junior college, taking classes, he was taking classes that revolved around his work schedule. I was taking classes just to, to take classes. I did not know what I wanted to do. I was just, just taking my basics and trying to, get, trying to get to a point where I really knew what I wanted to do with my life. So Jason and I carried on by attending junior college, neither one of us knowing what we wanted to do with our life, but we were together and that stayed, it stayed that way. We never had any differences that let us apart. We just, um, we didn't rush things. The next step was Jason had a, a job that was able to allow him to make a big decision in his life and that was to, to purchase a house. Here he was, a single man um, at the age of probably 22 I guess and he was purchasing his his first home so while we were not engaged we were not have any plans of of a wedding we um, we went into this house buy of his together um, not by signing the papers together by all means but we went into it knowing what we both liked as far as updates and and things that we wanted to change in the house. We made decisions together. My dad um, helped him a lot with advice on how to go about getting his first loan and qualifying and getting his credit to where he could actually buy a house. And um, Jason looked at him as a big mentor in this part of his life. So much so that Jason ended up going to work for my daddy, which was at a local funeral home. 
my daddy was a funeral director and had part ownership in the local funeral home and wanted Jason to come and work there, so Jason did. He left his, his job and went to work at the local funeral home. So, while he has a bit better job, he's, he's not so much happier. Um, there were lots of nights that he had to get up in the middle of the night and go on a call, meaning someone passed away and he had to go and, and pick, them, pick the body up. Um, lots of lots of nights he had to spend the night away from his home because they did a rotation where someone always spent the night at the funeral home and um, that's not the case now but it was back then about this time my dad got the diagnosis that he had kidney cancer um, he had a tumor on his kidney that was the size of a grapefruit and this had been going on for months and months of him having pain in his side that a local urologist was treating him for kidney stones. Given a wrong diagnosis and being treated for over a year with kidney stones, finding out he had a tumor so large in his kidney, the thing to, to be done was to remove his kidney. So needless to say, my dad was being treated by a different group of doctors at this point and his kidney was removed. I think at this time in his life, um, he started to realize the importance of family. And I think he started to realize that, that he may not live as long as he initially thought he would. Uh, we never discussed this. This is just my thinking because uh, the conversation that he had with Jason next involved telling him he understood if he chose to take a different path in his career. Meaning, um, your family, your family's very important to you while you don't have a family right now. I want you to think long and hard about how much you are away from home. If you ever did have a family, then, you know, I'm away from mine quite a bit. There were many, many, many nights when I was growing up that um, my dad was away from home and I was an only child. So my mom and I had a, a very good relationship. But that being said, we weren't all three together. While Jason didn't often quit the job immediately, he, um, he, he did ask me to marry him shortly after that. Um, we became engaged and we stayed that way for several years probably at least four years, three or four years, I can't remember. Uh, but he asked my dad for, you know, permission to marry his daughter, and of course that was granted. And not long afterwards, Jason was offered a job at another uh, local automotive business as a parts manager, and he took it. He took it and my dad totally understood. He totally um, agreed with the decision to walk away from what he had done for so many years and been away from his family. And, um, and Jason started a new chapter in our life. So during some of this time, um, my dad's uh, cancer had gone into remission. After his kidney was removed, uh, things were doing really good. Things were doing well until a few years later. And he got the diagnosis that the cancer had spread and it had spread to his liver. And when that happened, it happened fast. He underwent uh, several different types of treatment. One involved giving himself a shot day, uh, about every three days, I think it was. And it, it was supposed to put his immune system into overdrive into tricking it into thinking it was it needed to fight harder to rid itself of an infection therefore his temperature his fevers would get up to 106 degrees and um this went on for a couple of years uh, him trying to to treat this disease this way but it didn't work jason and i set a date to become married and that was june the 3rd 2000 and we did just that. My dad was, um, he was sick, but he was not, 
he was not um, to the point where we were immediately expecting death. He was uh, wearing a bag at this time because his body could not remove the bile that it was producing on its own. So he wore an external bag that, that did that for him. And he had turned really, really yellow in color. Um, very common with liver cancer. And so Jason and I were married on June the 3rd, 2000. He and I went on our honeymoon to Disney World. <laughs> of all places, we went to Disney World, but we both loved the place. We had never been together, so we chose to go to Disney World. And while we were there, uh, of course, I talked to my parents on the phone every single day. And there was a day that I talked to my dad and he didn't make sense. What he was saying was not adding up. And I could tell that my mom got on the phone pretty quickly and tried to cover up things. But I knew something something was not quite right. Something, something was different than what it had been before we left. And so um, Jason and I had a wonderful honeymoon. We came back home and we found out firsthand that things had taken a drastic turn for the worse. Um, my wedding was not something that I necessarily wanted. Uh, it wasn't an elaborate wedding, but in my mind, I just wanted to go to the courthouse. I did not care about a wedding dress. I just wanted it to be us and to be happy. Well, my parents didn't want that, my dad especially. And so we did, we did what they wanted. And that was, we had a wedding. We had a wedding at a church. We had a nice reception. We had a lot of family on, especially on his side that had not seen us for a long, long time come to the wedding. And um, he had a glorious time. So I guess you could kind of say that the wedding was for him. Um, if, if I had objected to having a wedding and I look back on it now, then I would have been, I would have been very disappointed for him that he didn't get to experience what he did on my wedding day. So we're back at home and, um, things went, it, you could just see it going downhill daily. And it was not very long before hospice was called in. And we knew the end was drawing near, um, but we didn't know exactly how near. And so on August the 13th of 2000, which was two months and seven days later, my dad passed away. And it was almost as if he saw his little girl, his only child, walk down the aisle in the wedding that he wanted me to have, and he gave up. And um, I, I have to say, while that was one of the hardest times of my life, I have, I have never felt the relief that I felt once he actually passed away because I knew he was no longer suffering. I knew uh, him not having to fight anymore, that was over. And days were, days were different. Of course they were different, but it was different for me and they were better for him. So I had to look at it that way because I had my mom that I needed to, to be there for. My dad had always done everything for us. Um, he, he, he just took care of everything. So, of course, he prepared my mom as well as he could for his death, which was imminent. Nothing can prepare you for the actual moment. So here I was, a newlywed, a happy newlywed with my husband, moving away from my home with my parents for the first time in my life leaving my mom alone without her husband, the only husband she ever had, 
and me starting a new chapter. It was a big, big deal for me. It was a big difference. It was, it was so much happening at one time, but I did really well. I did really well with it. Um, I think I just kept thinking in the back of my mind that it, it wasn't about us. He was not suffering. Um, I knew that we had to make things come together best way we could, and we did just that. We carried on the best way we knew how, and that was with each other. And we, uh, we enjoyed gardening. We, not gardening to the level we do now, but we enjoyed our little backyard garden. We lived in a neighborhood. When Jason bought his first house, my stipulations for us when we were married was for us to live in the city. How crazy does that sound? That's crazy, isn't it, Bandit? What if you had to live in the city? I got Jesse on one side and Bandit on the other. And that's where Jason bought his first house, was in the city. I failed to mention that earlier. In a neighborhood, mind you. Because that's what I wanted. That's all I had known. My whole life, I grew up in the city. I rode my bicycle around the neighborhood. I, um, I had friends that... We just walked to each other's house. And that's all I knew. And I wanted, I wanted to be in that same environment that I grew up in but it wasn't long for us to realize that the neighborhood was not as good as it was when Jason bought the house we could see the writing on the wall before it actually happened there were some changes that were happening and the values of the homes were diminishing and so um that's when Jason's mom reached out to us and she told us about some land that she owned that she didn't even know she owned. I mean, how does that happen, right? So the city of Valley Grand, which is kind of a, a suburb, I should say, of Selma, was incorporated into a city for the first time. And when that happened, they went around to all the landowners and they asked, did they want to be in the city of Valley Grand. And if they did, they, they signed off on it. And so they, they lived in Valley Grand themselves and they signed off and then they had to sign off on another property. And that property she did not know she owned. And that was because Jason's grandmother, many, many, many years earlier, had turned this whole plot of property into a cemetery. Why? It had a little a little cemetery if you watch the old videos and you've probably seen that old family cemetery it was surrounded by a wrought iron fence there were graves in there from back from the late 1700s a little small family cemetery but she had the entire five acres deemed a cemetery so she wouldn't have to pay property taxes on it smart right well so she signed the property to go into Valley Grand and she contacted Jason and she told him about this property. And she knew that we wanted to, to make a change. We were wanting to now not so much live in the city limits as I once thought I would never live out of, to now thinking that we may want to move into the more rural area. So she asked Jason if he would be interested in that property. And our first thought was, it's a cemetery. You can't build a house on a cemetery. So what are we going to do? So we contacted an attorney. And he said it would be a fairly easy process. So we went <laughs> through the paperwork of uh, having that five-acre cemetery surveyed off. And proving that it was just a part of the property that was a cemetery. And then having it drawn up to where the rest of the property was buildable. So we started thinking about building a house. And we knew that we were not in a financial situation to where we probably could pay somebody to build the house. We decided to put our house up for sale. And it sold rather quickly. I told you my mom was alone. 
she was living in town and Jason and I had sold the house so we moved in with her and this was in the year 2004 we probably sold the house in 2003 so we started we started our first house build together we had a um, some plans drawn up I learned to drive a tractor for the first time in my life Jason's daddy had an old John Deere tractor and he taught me how to drive it and it was on from there <laughs> I realized right then and there that I love tractors so while Jason was working a full-time job I could be found at our new property on the tractor I did things that I never ever had done in my life I learned how to run a chainsaw I learned how to hook up a chain to any log on that property I learned how to have move dirt I learned how to spread gravel it, it was just endless and then I learned a lot more and that was about house construction first things first is we had to build a road we had to build a road that went straight down a hill to get to where we wanted to build our house and that involved a lot and lot a lot of work not done by us this was something that we hired out we were able to take some of our money that we we profited from selling the house <laughs> and start by building a road so the 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 company came in and they built a, a nice road not just a road but a bridge they built a bridge that that went across a, a small creek to enable us to get to the other side of the property where we were going to build our house because on the front side of where the bridge was we had to buy this lot there was no access to the property that was deemed a cemetery it was so-called landlocked. I know that you can't be landlocked, but there was somebody that was in front of that property that did not want us on their property. So we probably would have been tied up in a legal battle for years had we not found out that this lot was for sale in the front of this property that Jason's parents owned. And um, we bought the lot, we built the, we built the bridge across the creek and it was on from there. Uh, we found our house plans. We found somebody to frame the house for us. And that's where, that's where we kind of started things. Jason and I had no construction background. His dad did. And he helped us tremendously throughout the entire build. Um, he has a, an electrical company and then he had uh, some employees that had some plumbing background, some AC work. Uh, Jason and I actually ran all of the duct work for the air conditioning system. Um, we put all the floor down. Uh, we, let's see, we did all the painting. Um, there was a lot of things that we did that we learned how to do that we didn't know how to do before. So that's where I get my wheel to never give up because we knew we couldn't give up. We knew we couldn't afford to pay somebody to do all of these things. And we knew that we were people that were go-getters. So um, it was a long drawn out process, a really long drawn out process. Y'all look at Bootsy. She's headbutting the umbrella, but she can't get it down because I've got it zip tied. Uh, it was a process that we didn't give up on. And lo and behold, after we got moved in and were there a few years, my mom who lived in town by herself in the city um, decided she wanted to come live with us. So we built a carport that separated the two houses and added on a mother-in-law suite. And that's how Little Cog came about. Uh, during the time, shortly after Mama's house was complete, Jason and I waited a long time to get our ducks in a row, so to speak. And we really have them in a row now. Can you see them back there? They're all, they're all in a row. <laughs> but we waited, we waited as long as we could till we felt like everything was just so-so before we indeed had a child. So in December of 2009, 
I had the most beautiful baby girl that we could have ever dreamed of in Mary Carl Smith. And um, I just, I felt like I wanted to tell you guys this story. I hope you were interested in it. I hope it was something that you wanted to hear. If not, I hope you enjoyed the animals in the background. But that's kind of, um, that that's that's the story of how Jason and I met and how how we got to the point to where Mary Carl was born. Uh, never had animals growing up, just cats and dogs, Jason the same. So, you know, maybe a whole nother story in itself about how animals came about. I hope you enjoyed hearing my story. And if you did, please like, comment, and subscribe. And y'all be good.